Okay, so simple enough, right? Dominic Team endorsed by Adidas head to toe, endorses and plays in the Adidas Soul Court Boosts. But is he? Is he really? Hey, what is up? It's Zach, your YouTube foot doctor. And you know, Dominic Team's shoes have always just fascinated me, mainly because he's playing with the combination of a couple different shoes, and to understand the reasons why he uses a combination of two different shoes is really to kind of understand the demands of professional court sports like tennis and basketball on the professional's foot. So let's see what his shoes are really made up of, what each component is made up of, and as we go through the components, I'll tell you why those were chosen versus maybe the ones that are available to you as the stock model in the store. So number one, of course, the uppers. And the uppers of his shoes are actually just the stock Adidas Soul Court Boost upper, and for good reason, they're some of the best on the market. Number one, the reinforced forefoot not only is really durable, but also it's sewn into the midsole of the shoe, so it's going to give you just so much stability in the forefoot and midfoot, and you do really need that playing on the professional level with how violent the movements are. You really do want to prevent all that twisting in the foot. Now number two, the molded ankle collar. As you can see, this really bulbous ankle collar, all that foam in there. What that's going to do is compress around your Achilles tendon and stop almost all heel slippage. So you get this really secure fit and kind of a custom molded fit around your ankle and your Achilles. So your movement is going to be a lot more fluid. In reality, just the stock Adidas Soul Court Boost Upper is great, not only for professionals, but also for people like you and me that are buying at the store. However, this is where the similarities to the stock sole cord boost end. As you can see in the midsole, he's playing with a bounce midsole, not a boost midsole, which is the one available in the store. And here's why. Boost foam is great at absorbing energy, absorbing weight and force on it. And it is quite a durable midsole foam. However, it is mediocre at best at actual energy return. Bounce foam, on the other hand, is terrific at energy return while it's new. It's also going to bottom out faster than boost foam, so that's why in the general public, sometimes people like the boost foam a little bit more just because it's going to last you longer. However, in Dominic Team's case, he has the luxury of traveling with however many shoes he tells Adidas to send him. So he's always having a fresh pair of bounce foam under his foot, and that bounce foam is going to give him a lot more energy return and a lot more performance on the court. And that's what he wants because it doesn't really matter if he bottom bottoms out a pair of bounce foam midsoles, he just goes and gets another one. Whereas for you and me, once that bounce foam is done, then we have to go buy a new pair. And finally, the outsole. Now, if you've watched any of Dominic Team's matches, you'll know he is notorious for complaining about his shoe's grip as he gets deeper into some matches, or sometimes he's complaining about the actual surface of the court making him slip, and so that's what makes his outsole rubber so interesting. And the reason that he gets into issues with grip is because he's one of the most violent movers on the tour. I very rarely see him with two feet on the ground hitting a shot. He's either jumping into his shots or he's sliding into them. So his demands are going to be so much higher than some other people's just because he's putting just these superhuman needs on the shoe. But if you look at the stock model, the Adidas Soul Court Boost, it's this really hard rubber compound omnidirectional herringbone, so it's all just really one streamlined design. Now this is going to grip really well in the long run, so once you break it in, that rubber is going to kind of start to grip better. It's also just going to last long, it's just made for durability. However, in Team's case, when you're a professional and you have professional demands, a softer rubber is going to grip a lot better because at the professional level, this really hard rubber in the short term might actually slip out from underneath of you. And so because of that fact, Dominic Team actually has the court jam bounce outsole on his shoes. Except when he's playing on clay, then he has the standard herringbone, or on grass, and he has the nubs. However, the court jam bounce outsole is really interesting. It is a variable depth and variable angle herringbone. It also is variable in the width of the herringbone. So you are going to get a lot more initial grip out of that. The rubber is a little softer, so it's going to interact with the hard court a little bit better. And that's great for someone like Team, who just needs the most in initial grip. And so even though over the long term, the sole court boost treads will grip better for longer. In the short term, the court jam bounce outsole is going to grip potentially a lot better than the sole court boost. But what I don't understand is, why don't they just sell that shoe? Dominic Team is not the only person that plays with a custom combo shoe. Serena Williams, Stefano Tsitsipas, Garibay Muguruza, Nadal, even Federer when he was with Nike, all played with shoes that were made of a combination of different shoe parts that weren't available for sale. 
And that just seems crazy to me that these companies would not want to sell a signature shoe to the public. I mean, take a look at basketball. Those signature shoes sell like crazy because when you're buying those shoes, let's say you buy the Kyrie 7, well, you're playing in the same shoe that he's playing in. Even in the world of running, you know, Kipchoge designed those Alpha Flies. And look, you get to run in the same shoes that one of the most elite runners in the world is running in. Look at Michael Jordan. He made an entire company out of it. Be like Mike. That's why the Jordans sell so well. And it's not like it's a foreign concept to tennis. There are signature shoes in the tennis world. Take Andy Roddick with the Fig Jams or when he went to Babylon, he even had his little signature on the Velcro of those shoes. Even right now, Asics makes the Court FF2 in the Novak version and they sell great. And hopefully in the future, On will join that with the Roger Pros. But for now, we're just left with the stock models and what you have to do is figure out what is the most important to your game, the uppers, the midsole, or the outsole, whichever it is, that's the shoe you go with. Now, if you want to see the differences between other pro shoes and the stock models like Federer, Serena Williams, Rafa Nadal, make sure you click into the playlist up above and subscribe down below. And I'll see you in the next video.